When installing radiant heat in a concrete slab, the slab should be insulated from the earth. We believe the best material to use for this is extruded polystyrene, which is a rigid foam board designed for under slab use. In our design and construction manual, you will see numerous ways to insulate. But for residential construction, we recommend two to three inches of insulation below and on the sides of the slab. While two inches is pretty standard, some states now recommend three inches below a heated slab, so be certain to check your local codes. The Radiant Tech slab manifold is shipped in a wooden crate that serves as a concrete form. The manifold box will be placed on top of the insulation and rebar, and when the time comes, the concrete will be poured around this box, and you will always have access to the fittings and valves. The beauty of this design is that you don't have to sleeve the tubing where it exits the slab, and you don't have to worry about the tubing being damaged when the concrete is troweled during the rest of your construction process or at any point in the future. Radiant Tech also offers a wall-mounted version of the slab manifold for those customers that prefer that method. As shown here, be sure to use PVC sweeps to protect the tubing where it exits the slab. The slab manifold is typically placed close to the heating source and pumps. However, since you will use PEX or copper to supply the manifold with water from the pump, the manifold can really be located anywhere. The manifold is usually placed along an outside wall, but it doesn't have to be. Once the manifold is situated, take the top and two front covers off to make working with the manifold simpler. Be sure to keep them because you will need them later. Before you begin the tubing installation, refer to the worksheet that your Radiant Tech technician prepared for you. This will tell you how much tubing goes in each of the zones, how many circuits there are, how long the rolls should be, and what the anticipated tube spacing will be. A custom tubing layout may have been prepared for your project, so this is a good time to refer to that to get an understanding of how the work can be done. Keep in mind that in almost all cases, an exact and perfect layout isn't necessary. The provided layout is meant to be used as a guide and for illustration purposes only. Also, if the recommended spacing is 10 inches, this is a guide as well. There's no need to get out a ruler and make sure you have exactly 10 inches. In some places, it might be 8 inches, others 12. That's okay. Once you take the tubing out of the box, carefully cut the tape off. Attach an end of the tubing at or near the manifold box. We typically don't like to attach the tubing to the manifold initially to allow the tubing to move if it needs to, and it will help prevent the pigtail effect as you start weaving the tubing back and forth. What you don't want to do is set the roll down and take off with it like it was a garden hose. Start walking away from the manifold box backwards, uncoiling the roll as you go. This will allow the tubing to come off in a nice smooth run, and it won't start to twist on you. After a few turns, the tubing may take on that pigtail effect, but you can get rid of it simply by turning the roll one way or the other. You can reference the tubing layout provided by Radiant Tech, or certainly go out and around the perimeter of the slab and work your way back and forth. You will want to keep the tubing about 4 inches from the outside wall and 6 inches from where the wax ring on the toilet will be. Initially, tie the tubing just enough to hold it in place, roughly every 6 to 8 feet. You may have to go back and adjust the tubing to fit it all in. The roll of tubing has footage markers, so you know how much you have left and when you should be trying to make it back to the manifold. As mentioned earlier, keep the tubing about 6 inches away from where the toilet will sit, so you eliminate potential damage to the wax ring. Now that you're back to the manifold, you have two ends that you will need to connect. One is the supply end, and the other is the return end. It doesn't matter much which one is where. You will want to connect one tube to the outermost port on the manifold, and the other end will be connected on the opposing side. 
Use the tubing cutter to make sure you have a nice square cut on the end of the tubing. Start by backing off the compression nut. Once it comes off, a ferrule will also come off. Slide the nut over the tubing. Secure the ferrule over the end of the tubing. Push the tubing onto the barb fitting and secure the nut to the manifold. Tighten the nut until you start to feel a little resistance. Continue with the next roll of tubing until all of the rolls of tubing are in. Keep in mind that when you get to the last roll of tubing, you may find you have 20 to 30 feet left over. If it's easy, go ahead and go back and try to use it all up. If not, it's okay to cut it off. If one run is shorter than the others, we can balance the system by adjusting the ball valve on that loop when we commission the system. Once all the tubing is in, you can now go back and put in the rest of the ties. You should have a tie about every two feet, and there should be at least three on the bends. Once all the tubing is connected to the manifold, you are now ready to pressure test. An attractive feature of all Radiantex lab manifolds is that they are pre-built with the kit. We're amazed at the number of Radiant installations done without a pressure test. Obviously, the best time to check for leaks is before you pour the concrete. The manifold has an air cap on one side that should be tight already. Just double check it. On the other side is a tire type air stem in which you'll connect the air hose. Pressure test to at least 50 PSI. Some codes may require a 100 PSI test, and it is okay to pressurize the tubing up to that level. Watch for five minutes. There should be no drop in pressure. If there is, the first place to check is the manifold. Invariably, one of the fittings is a little loose and will need to be tightened. Get a spray bottle of soap and water and spray the fittings, ball valves, and air stem. If you notice any bubbles, this is your leak. Sometimes the packing nut on the ball valve comes loose during shipping and needs to be retightened. Once you pass this initial pressure test, you will want to leave it pressurized for 8 to 12 hours and check the results. There can be a 3 to 5 psi drop in pressure due to temperature change. If it's more than that, you will want to check the fittings. Note, however, that air leaks where water will not, and if there truly was a leak, the pressure would be down to zero. Now that the pressure test is complete, we typically like to let out about half of the pressure and leave it during the pour. We do this so that if the tubing was damaged, the pressure will cause air bubbles in the concrete. So you know there is damage, but it's not under such high pressure that it could spray concrete all over someone. The tubing can remain under pressure until you're ready to hook up the system, even if that ends up being years from now. Before pouring the concrete, you will want to put the face plates back on the manifold box. Be sure to drop the lowest one so it's touching the top of the tubing. You will be left with a small gap, and that you can fill in with some newspapers or rag so that the concrete will not enter into the box and come into contact with the copper. You are now ready to pour your concrete. When you are ready to hook up your system, the pressure testing kit should be cut off and discarded. The easiest way to do it is with a small pipe cutter, which leaves you with two stubs. One will be used to supply the manifold with hot water, and the other will return the water back to the heating source. These supply and return lines can be either PEX or rigid copper. As mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter much which side is the supply, so simply pick one and the other will be the return. If you have questions, call to speak with a Radiant Tech technician at 1-800-451-7593.